Vasco Toys. Action figure, dioramas, and props. Thank you guys for joining me today where we're going to learn how to dry brush and we're going to be dry brushing this rock formation piece. For this we'll need some paper towels, we need a paint brush, and we're going to be painting this piece a gray scale finish. So we're going to need several different shades of gray. We're going to go dark to light and I will put the names and brands of these different paints in the description of the video so you guys can access those. Okay, so start out by checking that your brush is dry. If it's not dry, you could get some streaking, which we definitely don't want. Then you use some paper towels, pretty much any kind of paper towel will do. And just start out by folding this in half and placing it somewhere in your work area that is comfortable for you. Then go ahead and get your paintbrush ready. And after that, you need a place to put your paint. So I've got a very much used palette that I'll be using here, which you guys can see. For the first coat, we're going to be using this dark pavement apple barrel gray. And so with this paint job, we are going dark to light. I should mention that I had primed this already with just a black. Um, so what you want to do here is get some paint on your brush and try to get as much of it off on the paper towel as possible because we really just want to get like a light almost dusting so we're going to do kind of several layers to get the coverage that we want on the piece as far as the technique goes you really just want to let the brush do the work here so you don't need to press super hard um, and you're not going to see a ton with this first pavement color. Um, you can kind of start to see where I've put it on the rock formation, but it's going to kind of be a gradual progression of the coloring. You can see we've got some already showing up there, but it's not super noticeable yet. Okay, now it's time for our second coat where we're going to be using a slightly lighter gray and we're gonna be doing the same dry brushing technique. And the reason why we wanna do dry brushing for something like this is that if you do multiple, multiple layers of different colors, it really allows your cracks and the different gaps between the rock formation pieces to, to stand out really nicely. So all the texturing and all the sculpt work that you did will really shine through once you're dry brushing is complete. With this coat, we're gonna take the same approach. We're doing a light dusting. We're trying to get coverage throughout the piece. Although we don't have to be uh, as heavy handed in every single piece, we can pick some spots where we want to have a little bit more color, a little bit less. That variation makes the piece a little bit more interesting in my opinion. But what we wanna do here is try to get as much coverage as we can of each color. So the first two coats are down, now it's time to get the third coat. What's nice about what we're doing here with dry brushing too is that you really don't have to wait for your paint to dry because um, it, we're dry brushing. So there's not a long period of time you have to wait in between applying these layers, which can be uh, pretty convenient when you're trying to paint a diorama piece. So as we're applying this third coat of paint, you're gonna to start to notice that there is more detail kind of coming through. As we get lighter, all of that sculpt work and all that texturing is really gonna to start to show itself, which is pretty exciting because that's what we wanna see in the final result. And it kind of just blends both of the techniques of sculpting and painting together to make one final diorama. So that's what we're on the road to with this third coat. As you're doing this step, you want to try to be intentional on where your brush strokes are going because you want to make sure that you are not, you know, filling in the, the darker gaps with all the light colors necessarily. You want to make sure that that uh, black base still has some, um, some visibility as we're painting this. So we're really just trying to highlight the top portions of these rock formations 
with this coat of dry brushing. One of the things I like to do as I'm painting a piece is kind of just stop, take a quick break, take a step back and look to make sure that I'm accomplishing what I want to accomplish. Kind of just review the piece, doesn't have to be super long, but just to make sure you're on track with what you're trying to accomplish. All right, so now it's time for the fourth coat, and this is really where we're gonna to start to see this piece coming through the way that we want it. It's gonna start really looking like the rock formation piece that we were hoping for when we set out to make this diorama. Now that we're painting this fourth coat, one of the things that's really important is to make sure that we don't get streaking. So one of the things that you, ha you can do to make sure you do that is really, really try to get as much of the paint off of the brush as possible because a little really goes a long way here. As you guys can see, as I'm painting this, it's really just starting to lighten up and I'm barely putting any paint on the rock formation pieces. And remember, it's much, much easier to put on a little bit at a time and to continue to put on coats than to put on too much and streak the diorama and then have to repaint pieces because if you have to repaint it, you, you can fix it, but it's a longer process of kind of starting at the black uh, wash again and then going all the way through the color progression that you've seen during this video. Okay, so now we've applied all four shades of gray that we wanted to to the rock formation piece. And the next step to this is to get some browns in there so that we can add a little bit more realism to it. We're gonna start out with an Anita's chocolate brown color. And the reason I wanna put this on is because I want this piece to have a little bit more of a realistic look. So of course, if this were some sort of like plateau, uh, rocky mountain kind of situation, there would be a lot of earth tones on the piece as well, uh, not just the different variations of gray that we've applied. So for this step, I am going to use a smaller brush because I want to kind of highlight the cracks and I want to make sure that I don't you know, get too much uh, from my strokes. So what you're going to see here is me trying to just hit the areas around the edges of all the cracks and all the rock formation edges just to try to get a light layer of that brown to be visible. We're going to our sixth coat and we're going to our lightest gray that we had used in the step before the brown. And this is probably something that you know you don't, you don't have to do if you don't want to. Uh, I just feel like I wanna get some highlights on this piece so that's what I'm doing here and I'm like I said in the previous step I'm really just going extremely light as you can kind of tell I'm not pressing super hard on my brush strokes here so it's just really meant to get some of the detail of the rocks out a little bit more because we put that brown down so we want to kind of like just highlight the the gray again over top, you'll still be able to see the brown, but I think it gives it a nice finishing layer of paint. Okay guys, that's gonna do it for this dry brushing diorama tutorial. I hope you guys found this to be helpful. I hope that you guys are ready to go out and dry brush a piece of your own and use these skills. And I hope you like the way the piece turned out. So here's just a final look with Geralt of Rivia by McFarlane. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next tutorial.